Dobre ráno. Good morning, uh, everyone. So we will uh, start with uh, the next interesting uh, topics. We've been covering them for three years, and now we have to uh, talk about it only in two days. But I, I trust we'll be uh, successful. I am the director of the Center for Research of Ethnicity and Culture, and I will be the moderator of uh, today's uh, panel uh, focused on the communication of uh, the topic of integration with the public. As was mentioned yesterday, foreigners are becoming uh, uh, the citizens of our cities. Uh, they are in becoming uh, our neighbors, uh, co-workers, friends, and husbands and wives as well. Nevertheless, the public, uh, is, is the public does not recognize foreigners as a part of our society and uh, at our center we've been conducting uh, research uh, on the how, on how the public perceives the foreigners and the up-to-date uh, uh, data shows that the attitude towards foreigners is getting worse in the uh, last year 70 percent people have a uh, very bad feeling when they hear a word economical uh, migrant or um, Muslim family. In the last 10 years, the social distancing uh, uh, towards uh, foreigners is getting worse as well. That means that uh, we have problems with foreigners becoming part of our um, public affairs. The experience from Slovakia and from from abroad as well shows that the local level could have positive uh, impact on these attitudes and change them. Symbolic uh, politics is also important, which uh, can be uh, achieved uh, by local authorities or at local level. Uh, experience from Germany and Sweden as well shows that the municipalities uh, call for uh, peaceful communication, rational communication, and they also advocate at uh, uh, governments uh, that are very, uh, they, that have very nationalistic tendencies and they try to eliminate these tendencies or to influence the governments uh, in order not to uh, destroy the, co the coherence and cohesion at local level. And the communication is key, uh, we believe, and uh, therefore we chose this topic as one of the main topics of the uh, conference and of the panel. How to communicate, uh, with whom to communicate, these questions will be answered uh, by the foreigners and uh, my two uh, guests at uh, today's uh, panel and now I would like to invite Nina Galanska, the director of the Milan Shemechka Foundation, our partner organization within this project, to tell us how the topic of foreigners should be communicated with the public. So, uh, thank you very much for the floor. So, good morning. Uh, I'm happy you're here with us uh, today at the Capacity Conference, and I will try to focus on why or what are the reasons of communication and what's uh, behind and how should we respond to the communication and then i will give the floor to diana which will follow up with the uh, topic how to uh, communicate at local level so please can you start the presentation so just very uh, briefly how to communicate the topic of uh, migration proactively. So this is what we will uh, discuss uh, today. Uh, Steve uh, Castles in his book Age of Migration, the sixth edition published in 2019, uh, he says that the migration in the last 10 years is, uh, is uh, increasing uh, as to political uh, importance and this age was also called or is called Age of Migration. And uh, why did he call this age? as age of migration because migration has been uh, part of our lives uh, for many uh, years migration is also part of uh, is the same part of our lives as uh, as death and um, being born it's a, but why is it so important now well, there are many reasons behind why we could expect that the age of migration will uh, will prevail and because the level of our education is increasing and the specialization as well 
uh, and our uh, uh, labor markets, job markets are also uh, growing and there are many types, uh, many people uh, as the uh, the job seekers with higher education or higher qualification and lower qualification as well. The second thing, there are inequalities in uh, wealth and the uh, job opportunities, which motivates the people to uh, move from one country to another to, to find the better uh, living conditions, the better quality of life. This is the so-called internalization, internalization of the migration. And the third reason is the conflicts and the political oppression in some uh, countries, uh, which means that the, that the move, movement of people are oppressed, is uh, oppressed. Now, could you please start the poll if possible? And the question uh, in this poll is how do you perceive migration so what is what's the first that uh, comes to your mind when uh, in terms of migration is it immigration so is the first picture you draw is it the people who are coming to our country or to, to country where you live is it immigration so uh, do you have a picture of uh, people leaving the country where you live or is it asylum so the asylum seekers, so the people who are seeking asylum in, in countries where they are, which they are forced to leave. Is it uh, human trafficking? Is it internal migration? That means migration of migration uh, within the country from uh, from one region to one region to another, or some uh, or or other, or replaced. Uh, internally or replaced internally so what is your what's your opinion what is the first thing that uh crossed your mind so, so this this is multiple choice so uh you can uh of course uh you can uh pick more or you can choose more but i would like to know whether you have uh whether have a, a specific concrete uh picture or do you have more uh more views on this now, please, could you show us uh, the uh, results which we have? Okay, so not yet. So we can talk a little more about the terms uh, in this poll. Uh, more the in internally internally replaced people. Uh, this is a phenomenon uh, in. Uh, in countries with uh, with the uh, ongoing conflict. Oh, now here we have the results. So the, the the majority of you uh, thinks of uh, of uh, migration as immigration. That means people coming to live uh, in our country. But as the country showed, migration is not only about uh, one phenomenon. Migration is not just immigration, and migration is not just irregular migration, which is also interesting uh, about our um, poll because it's uh, it's also it's not just about asylum, but the um, first things which we have uh, in mind uh, when we imagine or when someone says the words migration, most of the the majority of people chose emigration as well, and uh, some of you also uh, have the picture of internal uh, migration. So the people uh, moving from one region to another. So, uh, thank you for answering the question. And now let's talk about the narrative. Migration is not uh, only immigration or irregular migration, but it is uh, in the political discourse, this is how it is, uh, rep uh, how it is uh, reflected. So, if the political discourse is uh, this is not satisfied with the migration topic then we are more uh, unhappy and this is also reflected then on the public uh, negative uh, attitudes to uh, 
migration are also very uh, common and are are not uh, are do not correspond with the attitudes of foreigners. So we mostly talk about the attitudes to uh, migration as to equal uh, attitudes to immig to, to, to migrants as persons. But in so sociology and in science in general, it is a different approach because when we talk about the phenomenon and talk about the people, this is these are two different. Uh, points of view the second or the next uh, point is the complexity and more layers of migration uh, as showed in the poll migration includes many phenomena on various levels whether it's um, politics uh, integration uh, international protection uh, transit etc uh, the attitude uh, approach and public uh, discourse these are all often affected by emotions and because of uh, uh, and many politicians do not want to engage in this discussion uh, at local level even more because they, these people are even closer to the citizens uh, to, to the voters why should we talk about uh, migration we shouldn't avoid uh, this communication because the uh, understanding how the citizens uh, perceive uh, migration and foreigners can uh, avoid uh, conflicts at local level uh, attitudes to integration and what affects them uh, how we perceive uh, immigration and now i will i will uh, focus on the topic which is uh, mostly affected at local level and affects also the attitudes of uh, people. These uh, things are more or less stable and are indirectly connected to immigration and these are our values. Uh, from lifestyle, uh, our level of education, to political uh, opinions, ideology, to uh, effects, related to the attitude to migration which are unstable uh, contact with foreigners our neighborhood and the safety in the neighborhood but also the political uh, influence and media uh, coverage how how migration is uh, depicted in uh, the media how the politicians talk about migration so we talk about uh, some stable if, uh, effect or stable stable impact on uh, migration and about unstable impact on migration but both of them have uh, affect the attitudes and the view of uh, uh, of citizens uh, i'm behind schedule so the, the approach or attitudes to uh, immigration so values people with universal uh, values they are empathic and then there are people uh, which are who are conservative and uh, they uh, care about tradition the people with universalistic uh, values are the people uh, having better um, approach to uh, integration the other group has more negative ex experience and then there are people which are ambivalent and uh, the values they uh, they have they are not strongly related to um to migration then we have political preferences and public discourse here so we we see a huge uh, impact of migration flows that doesn't mean a huge number of foreigners in in a certain country but the framing and the political discourse by certain politicians is very import important then the contact with foreigners in uh, central european countries the um, amount of uh, migration flows has been on the on increase during only the last uh, few years and the contact is uh, less visible but this may be one of the most important uh, impacts and it can also affect uh, the attitudes towards foreigners then in the political uh, discourse uh, in political discourse can have a negative effect and then we have the political framing, framing, uh, framing in uh, Central European countries and the social media, where the information about migration flows is higher than on the more extreme polls, more extreme sites. Uh, there is the manipulation of this of this topic. Okay, one minute left. So 
I will speed up my, my speech. Okay, what can we do about it uh, within the topic of the communication? So the first tar target group are people without any uh, any feelings about migration or about foreigners. We have to share our common values because values can affect uh, uh, in, uh, considerably uh, in how we perceive on for foreigners. Values can connect us. And we also have to bear into mind that we have to present positive stories about foreigners in our cities. So this concerns only data and information. We need to know more about our about the needs of our foreigners, of the of the foreigners living in our cities. We have to use the information of our citizens and inhabitants within the communication channels. We can talk about their fears and uh, their. Uh, their concerns and it, it's also uh, there's something to do without a balanced view point of view so uh, it can be the crime rate or quality of life this can also divide our society but also join us so we can see a lot of motivation uh, of people and then we can disperse their fears and concerns and one uh, last but uh, last but not least we have to have a regular uh, regular communication at the level of municipalities and that's one we wanted to uh, that's one thing that we would like to achieve thank you for your attention my colleague will follow up Thank you. Thank you very much, Nina. We have always the same problem with Nina because she has to slow down her pace of uh, the speech and also make her story shorter. But this is very tricky and difficult tasks to fulfill. Thank you very much for the general picture presented by Nina. Now we'll switch to more practical issues as regards this topic. Uh, Diana Dobrutska from the agency in Europea. The Neuropea Agency helped us within this project on how to communicate at local level the topic of migration. She works as a consultant in Europe. She's an expert for media and communication. She's a so-called media guru, an expert in this field. So my question to you is, how should Put all. Uh, how, how should we put all these things into practice? Thank you very much for a brief introduction of myself uh, from your side. Yes, at the beginning, we focused uh, within this project on how to uh, uh, how to better the image of foreigners uh, in Slovakia because uh, it divides people. So on the one hand. We can see that some people, uh, some are afraid, uh, some people think that uh, uh, some people uh, say and abuse this topic and use uh, offensive statements. We wanted to know why is it like this. I would like to ask our technical staff to help me with uh, the presentation. I hope that you can see it right now. Thank you. Yes. So I will try to start with the presentation. The next slide, please. So at the beginning, I would like to use a quote, which uh, was famous two years ago. And 2004, we have more than one, one, uh, 11,000 uh, refugees in Slovakia living in Gabčikovo. They were seeking asylum and they were playing football with uh, local inhabitants. And in 2015, tens of uh, migration were placed into, into a reception center in Gabčikovo and there was a petition against those people in Gabčikovo. I think that uh, 10 years have already passed after this period and we can think that we can see that some attitudes towards, towards foreigners have changed. Uh, uh, after 10 years, but it's not always like that. Because attitudes change only during the last uh, during the last year. We we analyzed and we saw that there was a, there was a change in the public discourse 
because we monitored all the media coverage, all the media re releases, releases uh, dealing with this topic, and we can see that uh, from the national contact point of the European migration uh, network, that the topic is only is, is a topic which is not so important. It's not a topic which was really present in media. And in 2015, uh, um, it wasn't true. It wasn't like that anymore. So in 2015, it was due to the to the fact that the political situation in uh, Middle East there was a big uh, and a huge migration crisis, and many people began to think about it. Also, those who are tolerant and who have good values. Those people uh, became concerned about uh, the international situation of 2015, and this led to really bad discussions in, in media uh, and uh, in the political discourse. So we can see that from a minority issue, from the media coverage, it became a topic of uh, utmost importance. We, in our analysis, we only analyzed uh, this topic in the media releases pre presented in the media coverage uh, uh, in Slovakia. So uh, we analyzed the most important press releases in this topic. And I have to say that in my presentation, the good news is that Slov Slovakians, we, are, we do not have xenophobic tendencies by our nature. Because uh, 10 years ago, if we were really fun with foreigners in 2015, I think it's only it's only a question of a, to have a balanced communication. Yesterday, during yesterday's com, com, uh, during yesterday's uh, presentations, we heard that the Bratislava. 100 years ago, it was really a multicultural city and nobody looked at it as something different, as something strange. So we have these testimonies uh, we could look at from our history. Next slide, please. We can see what really shapes or what really determines uh, the perception of foreigners. Since 2015, there was an increase in numbers of foreigners. And I can I can say that there was an increase in number and, and also increase uh, of uh, negative, negative uh, remarks or negative news about it. It had to do with the communication at certain levels. If we have a look, if we can uh, switch to next slide, you can see that if you see who is the influencer, who is who really determines the media discourse, uh, the most important uh, persons who can determine the media discourse are politicians. Then. Uh, government officials and state authorities, but uh, they were communicating this topic in a more neutral way in accordance with uh, certain rules, with our legislation, etc. But our politicians, uh, of course, uh, when the elections were imminent, that then their discourses and the speeches were more negative and they were talking uh, in a negative way about foreigners, and that could also shape uh, the attitudes of people towards foreigners. We have to say that in this period, there was an increase in an extension of, uh, of the influence of the social media in Slovakia as well. And this was connected to the, the huge amount of conspiracy theories and uh, fake news. We have to say that, on the other hand, the political discourse, in the common political discourse presented by our politicians and in political interviews, this topic became very important and it really 
shaped uh, all and determined all the uh, all the political decision taken at the time we can see that before elections and during the election period that the amount of uh, the amount of negative premier, uh, the amount of negative uh, media releases was on the peak we will have uh, municipal next municipal elections and it can also determine the communication of this topic of uh, the integration of foreigners at the municipality level. But like Nina said, it doesn't mean necessarily that we do not we we do have uh, we have to turn a blind eye to this op to this topic because really we have to bear in mind because uh, we will have another election soon, so we will we can use this uh, this period to reflect upon this topic, so that we can we can uh, we can have a positive influence on this on this topic and on these attitudes. So I think that this is a good message for our local politicians and our municipalities. We have to get ready, and we we have to be prepared for possible negative comments. Uh, from the public, from from the opposition, but we do not have to get rid of this topic. So next slide, please. So let's have a look on how we perceive foreigners today. I just read somewhere that if somebody says the term of a migrant, some uh, some people may think of a crowd of. Uh, people of black people so this is a print screen green screen that can be found can, uh, if you if you type in uh, the, the word migrant in google the, what's interesting here is that these images uh, of those full of black people uh, this was also used by several ministries uh, on their websites and several media also used it in positive uh, in positive uh, in positive news so this is the typical image that can it can be found when you type in the word migrant on the other hand what can be seen these are real people these are real people who are engaged and involved many of them are, are involved in the capacity project most of them come from other countries these are people that we can really meet Unlike those people who are uh, who were on those boats in the previous image, this is maybe the good news for our municipalities, because municipalities do not have to work with virtue people depicted on boats, but, but we can also work with those people in real life on a daily basis. But we have to just introduce them, we have to present them. We have been discussed this with Nina over, because these are people that during the capacity project. Uh, which was also co-organized by our foundation but there are some people who do not share do not have any experience with foreigners this is really quite surprising because we have foreigners we have uh, actors we have singers who are foreigners Miros Birka, uh, Robo Grigoro these are famous singers of uh, foreign origin so uh, these are people that can be perceived by general public, but we do not. Maybe people do not see them as, as foreigners. We have uh, many sport professionals and uh, also academics we can work with, and municipalities can work and collaborate with them. So the good news for the good news is for our municipalities that, unlike politicians, we do not have to solve municipalities do not have to solve virtual problems we have to solve real problems we have to collaborate with real people and this is how real people look like on the other hand very short uh, uh, remark that uh, there was a short survey by the uh, union of slovak towns and municipalities that uh, in relation with the pandemic the credibility is higher when compared to the credibility of our politicians so don't be afraid you you are trustworthy and you can open this topic and talk about it now i'm talking to our municipalities and representatives of them <laughs> now i would like to uh, summarize real briefly this slide we have prepared 10 rules of uh, successful communication 
This is a really brief summary of ten tens of pages of a very of a of an effective manual prepared for our municipalities. It can be found on the website of uh, the partners of our project, and it can be sent to anyone. So, just uh, let us know. It is fine that uh, uh, within this project, within the capacity project, uh, awareness was raised. We know how many officials at our municipal at the municipalities level level work from Banska Bystrica. We heard this. Ms. Gaido Shikova talked about it. That the communication does not always work. We have to focus on target groups. We have to focus on uh, the people we would like to communicate with at municipality level, at municipalities level. So we have to take, uh, we have to pay attention, and we have to prevent communication barriers and obstacles. So we have to. We have to be careful, and I think the basic role of our municipalities is to uh, fulfill the communication uh, objective, the communication mission, because they can uh, they can get into they can communicate with employers, uh, with higher education facilities, with universities, etc. Really. If we talk with NGOs, with uh, government officials, with uh, municipal representatives and communities representatives, we have to collaborate and we have to f find what's common, what uh, really uh, what really joins us or what unifies us and not what, what divides us. So this is the good news that we can find the uh, intermediary uh, forces <laughs> that join us and within the capacity project we uh, prepared a lot of we developed a lot of materials that that can be used during the communication with foreigners at municipalities level and these sources are also uh, summarized and the manual and guide which can be uh, which can be sent to other municipalities and is it is at our disposal so this was a very brief summary and I'm happy to answer any of your questions during the discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Diana. Uh, I would like to only add that the people on the ships are also people, and the we should show the solidarity and uh, sensitive communication uh, also towards these people, because we know that uh, they are not on the ships because they want to be there. They are also in the positive uh, picture that I wanted to say that uh, it's it this is really not the picture and the people coming from these uh, sh uh these uh, ships and he's asylum seeker and he's awarded this this status these people work here they are educated here integrated in in the countries and are becoming part of uh, the society a valuable part of the society and they are also uh depicted in this picture but we didn't have enough time to cover all of this but uh, they are they also really are some positive um, uh, parts of the picture okay so th thank you for explaining this thank you uh, very much for your uh, very interesting overview of why it is important uh, it was i found all also many important uh, data in your presentation and thank you both for your presentations but uh, let's move from theory to uh, practice throughout the entire capacity project we also we realized these uh, things that we work with because all of us work uh, in in this field uh, for a long time and we try to work with the municipalities and to collaborate with municipalities on because and therefore we prepared three interesting videos for you which uh, come uh, from uh, various Slovak uh, cities Bratislava, Trnava and Košice and you will see how you can do this and how uh, and here we will see the, the the practice of the theory uh ivana and nina uh presented to us so uh we can start the video uh, 
So during the last years, foreigners came in big numbers to Slovakia. I can't listen. Oh, there was this problem with the sound. That means that more and more uh, foreigners live at local level. If we talk about Bratislava, in Bratislava, one third of all foreigners in Slovakia lives there. That means almost 8% of all the inhabitants. Of the I would like to thank to our foreigners. That's why in 2019, one a half year after I took office, I invited them to a common uh, lunch to join me at a common uh, to join me at lunch in the private palace. I uh, invited all of them. Uh, I, I invited those who I could invite. I I wanted to tell them that I see them as an inevitable inevitable part of our city. My name is Gregory Fabian, and I've been living in Bratislava for 18 years. I'm a an international human rights lawyer, actually a New York lawyer, who came to Bratislava in 1993, and I worked here as a human rights lawyer until 2000. And then I went to the Balkans for nine years and then returned to Bratislava in 2009, where I want to live for the rest of my life. I have lived in Bratislava for more than 23 years and uh, together with my husband we founded a kindergarten and a school 20 years ago. The lunch that the mayor had with our foreigners received a very positive feedback because we could see the positive effect towards foreigners living in Bratislava because they really liked that the mayor of Bratislava was open to meet foreigners as a part of segment of population that normally uh, mayors do not visit or uh, see. I was most pleased and most uh, that the mayor was so cordial in his uh, wanting to integrate foreigners into Bratislava society. The luncheon was very, very cordial, and I think uh, that he showed us there's many opportunities for foreigners to participate in government and public affairs uh, in Bratislava. Sitting for a meal for most cultures of the world denotes real friendship. So for me, uh, it was a powerful gesture uh, from the city authority that showed really that uh, the city wants to welcome uh, the diversity uh, of the uh, community. Almost 16 people joined the lunch with mayor. Uh, we try to find a balance from the geographical point of view, country of origin, men and women joined us at the lunch. So these are people who are involved in government public affairs. My goal is to uh, back to life uh, the, uh, the identity of Bratislava from the past. I would like to see our city as a friendly and open city towards anyone without no distinction to those who participate in development of our city. I was able to offer some thoughts and learn about some of the issues that the city has and be able to offer some activities that today have grown to a much bigger project of engaging into planting a lot of trees in town. I'm very pleased because he's shown a real interest in helping us to develop a platform, a sort of a, uh, an intermediary force between foreigners in Bratislava and the government to better enable us as foreigners to integrate into society. I think that one of the results of the capacity project was the lunch with the mayor of Bratislava. And we want to set up some uh, somehow an advisory council. It can be developing an informal platform. This platform can be here for the needs of foreigners, for the needs of municipality. The goal for me, uh, and I think uh, throughout the education I received from my family and my community, is that there should be one day a world where we all feel we live in a global village and it's just one human race. So, of course, that has also always been my wish and my my uh, desire to work towards this. And I feel, uh, even though Slovaks are sometimes impatient and wanted this to happen earlier, but I feel like we have come a, a long way. I think that what's important is, is that if 
anyone's rights are violated, whether it be a foreigner, whether it be someone born in Slovakia, that they have the opportunity to seek a remedy for those violations, to correct a wrong, to uphold their rights or whatever, to prevent a violation. Um, and I think that every year since I've been here, the opportunities for foreigners to do so have increased, uh, particularly with organizations like uh, the Milan Szymetska Foundation and, and uh, the Human Rights League. Uh, they give foreigners an opportunity for legal access to their rights, to defend their rights if they need to. At the same time, like I have already mentioned, I wanted to thank to all of them for their endeavors, for their activities that contribute to the development of Bratislava, to have a nicer city. I wanted to tell them that Bratislava is also their city and they're always welcome here. Thanks. <clears throat> The city Trnava realizes that migration is a very sensitive uh, topic and the responses from the public differ. Therefore, it is even more important to uh, focus on the communication with foreigners as well. My name is Helena Hudzikova. I work, I, I'm a research worker for the Center of uh, Research for of Ethnicity and Culture. Uh, we had a research task within the capacity, capacity project to map the situation in four uh, municipalities and we gained uh, an insight into the uh, local uh, context. Throughout the project, we uh, tried to um, develop communication uh, strategies. The pandemic limited our um, uh, op our options, so we are communicating via social uh, media and we try to provide uh, information to the foreigners uh, on mass testing, for instance. Before the pandemic, we communicated uh, uh, on the level of symbolic politics. So we organized uh, uh, events. We invited uh, foreign for uh, foreigners, and we uh, gained inspiration and cooperated with uh, foreigners living in uh, the territory of Trnava, who, uh, with um, uh, sports or uh, creative spirit, and they they became the part of Trnava. is over hopefully some cooking i am marshall marshall pandya i'm from india and uh, i'm in Tarnava for a little more over two years i uh, i'm here because i married a slovak and uh, so i'm living here uh, i'm uh, basically teaching english and also i have been involved and it was a wonderful journey for me. Uh, as we've uh, realized this openness of uh, the citizens of Tenava uh, towards uh, foreigners, we wanted to show uh, the citizens what uh, kind of foreigners live here, what do they bring to the city. We wanted to introduce them. There are uh, foreigners from more than 80 countries uh, worldwide, and many of them uh, do interesting things. They develop this uh, city. They are engaged in a different in different ways, and this is what we wanted to show the uh, citizens of Tarnava. We contacted the Tarnava radio uh, and asked them whether they were not interested in uh, in covering this topic, and we were very uh, pleasantly surprised uh, um, of the attitude of um, Tarnava radio. Uh, they made this uh, show their own, so th they made a series uh, uh, of show foreigners in Tarnava, and they showed that these are the people who bring something new to the city. Uh, interviews in uh, the uh, Trava magazine was part of the capacity project and uh, in this mag in, in this uh, monthly magazine which has uh, many or many people read this magazine and we provided interviews with foreigners Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of light. I, the very, uh, very um, attitude 
or the openness and and this whole program the capacity program it that itself is a huge light i would say it's it's a flood light because not everybody may be uh, uh, right now aware of it but we just need to go on we just need to push towards it and and uh, it's going to be wonderful tarnav is going to be like uh, a major change you know happy change for foreigners not just foreigners but i also i believe the locals because internationally english and other languages are and uh, they are so much appreciated and uh, so much important and i believe the locals are going to very be enriched you know very much help with all this samozrejme že je vždy čo zlepšovať a presto there is always room for improvement and uh, we have really a lot to uh improve and to move forward uh as to this uh, topic but we are trying to do our best for Tenava to become uh, a great place uh, to live for all the foreigners Košice is uh, shaped as a multicultural city uh, thanks to its uh, location near the language border Nowadays, uh, Košice uh, have, has open arms not only to geographically close uh, cultures such as uh, from Hungary, but uh, we have also Vietnamese community present, Bulgarian uh, club or association of uh, uh, Russians. The Capacity Project is our project in cooperation with other partners uh, uh, focused on support of municipalities to help them learn how to work with uh, foreigners living in their cities or are citizens of their cities. And one of the topics we covered was uh, the sim symbolic uh, politics, how foreigners feel in our cities in Slovakia or whether they are recognized by the municipalities and they know how to communicate uh, about these topics with the public because uh, this is uh, often accompanied with concerns. My name is Taranova Alexandra. I am from Ukraine. I came in 2000 to, in 2017 to Košice. My name is Eleonora Durishinova. I've been living in Slovakia for seven years. I studied, I studied, I also did my PhD in Slovakia and I work here now. Uh, I came from Ukraine, from Bohansk city, uh, where the, when the Russians uh, came, we uh, became migrants. Uh, as I recall, uh, my, my first uh, capacity uh, involvement was interpretation for Russians and Ukrainians living in Slovakia as, as asylum seekers. I live uh, very well in Slovakia because the Slovaks gave us uh, a garden and uh, I grew, uh, I have uh, vegetables and fruit. Uh, on my uh, garden and then I go to uh, the market and sell these fruits and vegetables. Now we try to focus also on positive uh, examples and Košice uh, is really a nice example of a, ci of a city uh, taking pride in its multicultural uh, form. They organize many uh, events involving um, um, minorities living here and the example one of the example is the soup festival or diversity festival the goal of the uh, soup festival is to show the diversity of Košice and uh, the people who are part of Košice when they told us for the first time about the soup festival they told us uh, we, we told them we wanted to be part of it we wanted but we didn't know how it's how it's going to look like what we should do then they told us we have to cook 40 liters of borscht that was really interesting for us in the little um, problematic we didn't know how we didn't know the ingredient or the amount of the quantity of ingredients we had to buy but at the end of the day it was uh, great we cooked the borscht and in an hour all the borscht was eaten soup festival is a great integrational uh, event uh, because all uh, all the, all the involved uh, people can have the same uh, 
can be engaged in the same way. My uh, job was to cook uh, Ukrainian uh, soup. I chose Ukrainian soup uh, typically for the eastern part of uh, Ukraine. So it, it, it was Cossack uh, soup, which was uh, unfamiliar or unknown to Slovaks. But what's, inter what's uh, interesting is that using the same ingredients, you can cook uh, so many uh, meals. The I am I am from Kosice campaign was a campaign uh, developed when we were creating a strategy uh, to uh, gain insight how the, the municipality can, could help with integration of foreigners. Our goal is for the uh, foreign nationals to feel like home in Kosice, and we also wanted to introduce uh, successful personalities, successful people in living or from Kosice. I feel like an Ukrainian, but I am also from Oshita. And I really like uh, Slovakia and Slovak people because they are, they have good heart. Uh, I have many positive experience and view on uh, foreigners. Uh, it, it was uh, improved very much. Currently, the foreigners had the possibility and know where to find information. The information I, I believe that we will we still have to work on this the foreigners coming to slovakia uh, come are coming for work or for uh, education uh, it's easier now to to contact the municipality so i think the communication was improved and i believe that in the future it will be even better thank you very much this was very ex this was excellent and very interesting uh, video very interesting videos so i could see that everything that nina and diana said was there and these videos it was mentioned there so uh, just uh, like you mentioned how politicians can shape the image of foreigners and the positive message of foreigners we can see, we could see that sometimes only few things have to be done in order to better the image of uh, the newcomers and foreigners in other cities when in, when in, when we compare it to the political discourse of some of our politicians so this was a show uh, this was a, a short example of how it can be done but since we are not always in Bratislava now we will reach our <laughs> our correspondent from Prague Jan Janoszek that you met yesterday we have a small déjà vu from yesterday. Hello, Honza. Hello, Jan. If some of you did not uh, see the presentation of uh, which was presented by Jan yesterday. He's a specialist and expert who works for the mayor's office in Prague. He deals with the topic of uh, the integration of foreigners, and his department and the municipality of Prague deals with many activities, but also with the topic of integration of foreigners. And then they performed a very interesting initiative that uh, which is called Prague, the Grand Metropolis for Everyone. And he's joining our uh, our discussion today because Prague has long standing, a long term experience with foreigners when compared to Slovakian cities. So Honza, I would like to ask you to talk us about to uh, share with us uh, why is it important to communicate on this about this topic and we want to hear your testimony from the municipality of Prague so that you can share bad and good experience on this topic hello to everyone thank you very much for giving me the floor and thank you very much for being able to participate uh, in this uh, in this panel which is very important because it deals with the communication with the public so I will start my presentation. I hope you can see it. So let's start the ball rolling. Uh, my presentation. In my presentation, I will talk to you about several aspects of the communication with the public. We have several strategies in place. I will present some of the current good practice in place and some long-term objectives we would like to achieve so that Prague, the Grand Metropolis, will really be for everyone. At the very start, I would like to 
talk to you why we have this communication with with the public not only with the majority population but with the uh, general public like i said yesterday during my presentation not only prague the czech republic we are we have migration which is on increase that means uh we have almost 16 or 20 percent of our inhabitants coming from abroad so we have to communicate with them we have to have some communication strategies in place we have these xenophobic uh, tendencies that already exist which present which present a threat to the communication with the public so we have to, if we uh, remind the divorce in the Balkanic countries, uh, there were refugees coming from this, from those countries. This xenophobic tendencies is something that we have to bear in mind. I would like to highlight a very important aspect related to that. There is a big division or a big uh, disbalance between the typical or common uh, political discourse and the media coverage and then also we have this uh, we have our uh, daily experience which is very different to what is perceived perceived by the general public we also have to bear in mind another factor migration is a complex issue and also immigration is also a complex issue the basis why we have to communicate these issues properly because we do not want that the negative tendencies prevail in this topic because this is a serious threat for foreign policy and policy as, as such that means this could undermine all of our efforts and it, it could also undermine the implementation of further policies so that's why we have to find a force against xenophobic tendencies and we have to find a peaceful coexistence for everyone this must be consistent within our uh, strategy the issue uh, is based on two priorities we have to find a good coexistence of the majority society with migrants we have to raise awareness that means we have to de develop strategies that would improve uh, awareness which is related to this topic basically we have really good potential objectives that can be developed we have a good website which is called prague grand metropolis for everyone we have a good facebook page we use all these communication tools so these are the most important communication tools on the mass media on, uh, on the social media and this also can be used by ngos and uh, within our subsidy schemes we really focus on this topic ngos and our partners can can uh, prepare some reach out activities and educational activities that can supplement this uh, strategy of communication with the with the public and it can prom it can promote uh, the organization of meetings in the future and we also have a plan of the communication strategy this this is a system because it is a complex issue and we will we will have to give it a, a framework and certain objectives from the point of view of uh, the current cooperation and current practice i think that we have a potential instrument to communicate uh, with the with the general public because we have our facebook site we have a facebook page and our website where you can find more information about migrants and immigration uh, as a topic in prague and the czech republic and we try to communicate uh, testimonies and uh, stories uh, we have interviews we publish on our fa uh, facebook page and uh, on uh, on our website because we want to put uh, uh, specific examples specific stories of uh, foreigners living of the foreigners living in bratislava because we do not want to promote only general information and the general space we have four reach out campaigns I mean, uh, Prague uh, has not performed uh, 
by itself these campaigns, but uh, on the territory of the capital city of the Czech Republic, Prague, uh, it was established by the municipality of Prague, uh, which also analyzes, uh, which also analyzes general general policy, gen general government pub uh, policy, and we also publish uh, all the information from Prague. For instance, strolls in Prague, promenades, etc. I will show you several pictures later. We also try to cooperate with NGOs and districts in Prague uh, we, because we would like to promote uh, promote uh, events that uh, take place in Prague. I'd like to support it. We also prepared and developed booklets and uh, propagation materials, promotion materials. And I think that we use the, fund, uh, uh, the funding from the subsidy scheme currently in place. We, we also need to cooperate with the with the media department from the municipality of Prague because they organize huge events and we try to promote uh, very important events so that more people can collaborate and take participate in that. There is a, this is a, this is an example of one of the interviews which were published with one of uh, uh, the Iranian nationals who lives in Prague. There is a, there is this interview that can be found on our website called Grand Metro Prague Grand Metropolis for Everyone and other NGOs dealing with migrants also publish and also try to disseminate this, uh, this story. It was also uh, published in hate free on and on hate free sites so that it can reach out to more general public. As regards the projects being carried out uh, uh, in our districts and by NGOs, we have this meeting of cultures, or, uh, we have this campaign uh, that means meet your culture, meet other culture, meet another culture. This is uh, also an event to promote this topic. Uh, it can we have the uh, this music festival which takes place, uh, which uh, which the uh, festival which takes place there, or uh, other festival that can be organized within these meetings. Uh, maybe this is also famous uh, neighborhood activities being carried out. Also, meet your family or meet your neighbors. Uh, so that you can meet uh, other and uh, other families in your neighborhood. When we were talking about the method, method, uh, methodic, uh, uh, methodical uh, support of this project, we try to promote uh, our support. We published this booklet on how to communicate with the public. This covers uh, the basic information. Um, bias and prejudice, etc. So how can we deal with that? How can we oppress uh, traditional stereotypes, etc. And these are some of the answers on how to deal with that. Now I would like to focus uh, about something. I would like to uh, tell you something about the communication center of Prague. Uh, it was really a good inspiration for us on how to structure everything, on how to develop develop our strategies, our communication strategies. Here on the left side, we can uh, you can see a show uh, you can uh, you can see an example of the salad bowl of Prague. You can see the it was an event uh, comprising of several strolls in Prague and meetings and cooking, etc. And on the right side, you can see the result of the uh, integral project. That this this was a project designed for several districts of Prague, for uh, public administration, for our municipalities, so that they can know what are what is the uh, what are the basic facts about foreigners, and so that they can work with that information. That we launched a very big campaign campaign in 2018 when uh, when we presented 
local cooperation in the Czech Republic. And then we have another campaign which was already launched in which we work with facts uh, when compared to stereotypes, etc. And it will be followed by a series of workshops at primary and secondary schools. So if I have to sum up some of the results or some of the good practices of our experience, sometimes we overestimate the common picture of the integration of foreigners because from the analysis being carried out by several city districts in Prague, it was shown that, that the perception on a daily basis at local level is not that negative. When we had, when we present good examples of neighborhood activities, of coexistence, that means that this, this prevails on a daily basis because uh, people like to organize Vietnamese uh, evenings, uh, people like to get to know their neighbors, etc. So we have to bear in mind what are the basic conclusions, what are the basic results when we communicate with the public. We can use several surveys carried out by Eurobarometer or um, local analysis, stati statistics, and we have to bear in mind the important and positive effects of the integration policy of integration policies for municipalities. And we have to compare data versus facts so that we can work with stereotypes. Of, co of course, it is crucial to create spaces for uh, meetings so that we can raise awareness because a personal a uh, personal meeting or a uh, personal experience is some of the some of the tools on uh, uh, some of the tools that can be used uh, to overcome stereotypes we also take into account that our communication has to be uh, has to be organized in a systemic way has to be systemic because we have to highlight not only the information but also the concept of uh, the diversity of a city and we have to use all the communication channels so that the communication can be effective throughout the whole city. So Prague, a grand metropolis for everyone is our objective that we would like to fulfill. And this is our vision. We would like to present Prague as a city that uh, is there for everyone with, uh, without any distinction, without a distinction as regards the country of origin, etc. So the communication with the general, with the general public has to, has to be efficient and we have to be prepared for that. Uh, we also want to take inspirations from abroad, from other cities like Amsterdam, etc., where they launch Antrimer cities, networks, etc. Of course, I think that Prague will also be able to organize Antrimer cities network. Thank you very much. I hope uh, it wasn't too long. Thank you very much. I'm, I will be happy to answer all of your, all of your questions. Thank you very much, Jan, for your presentation. I think it was very complex and comprehensive, and I like really liked how you uh, included it in all the strategic uh, documents and strategic communication because this is an eminent part of the city planning and what the city does with other policies as well. And we are trying to point out this fact uh, in our project as well because. Uh, we shouldn't be only we should be rather proactive than reactive as nina mentioned and it needs to be uh, uh we need to think about it thoroughly we have about 15 minutes for our discussion i have some questions here but of course uh, our uh, guests come first and our participants so please uh, you can you you can uh, raise your questions and ask our uh, panelists Maybe if you have some comments or remarks, uh, one question for Diana. How can we explain that church did not uh, provide any answer or have or didn't you see any uh, posts on uh, on the blogs of uh, Christian organizations? Uh, thank you for the information. I wouldn't generalize this. We haven't uh, haven't uh, focused only on church uh, and church posts. We've focused more on um, media coverage. 
but I think it's not one-sided uh, because uh, there were some official um, uh, calls for uh, toleration from the church, especially in 2015 when this uh, topic and the, this crisis was the, the crisis peaked. But yes, we've uh, we've identified and seen many blogs which were really negative and radical and had radical tendencies with uh, hoaxes um, as to uh, Islamization, um, security threats, uh, that the Muslims come and rape our women and, and such uh, hoaxes, which uh, also were related to gender um, policy. Everyone who is persecuted for gender um reasons can uh, seek asylum in slovakia etc so more and more hoaxes that they will they will uh, use our social system to to uh, collect uh, allowances and similar all of these things are summarized in our report and in the strategy we've um, mentioned or included also the the main uh, hoaxes and i think the church or Catholic, I'm not sure how to, exp how to properly uh, call this. These posts or blogs are also included in this list of ours. But I have to say we cannot generalize now. We cannot say that the church itself uh, has a negative or positive attitude or did express its opinion or not. Mm, what's important for uh, the communication at a uh, regional level, uh, uh, what's important is that uh, our many uh, parishes are uh, part of uh, the project and help the asylum uh, seekers and their children they, they care about they take care uh, about them so at local level you have to also uh, find some partners who are willing to help us as mentioned uh, at the beginning maybe it's also a topic i uh, haven't uh, covered because uh, the selection of third parties and the partners in the communication is one of the procedures of some uh, positive uh, framing and negative framing as well but when we focus on building the, the positive or or creating a positive uh, picture we showed in that case it is important to work with uh, with uh, high quality um, events and show the people in the real in, in in the in the actual environment integrated environment uh, uh, among other people with the majority uh, the majority population and we have to uh, select the um, means of uh, communication the appropriate means of communication and choose the right partners who will support us now can you tell us some examples of the partners who could, who could this be well now the the, uh, uh, the starting point was the church now in this question but of course these can be church ngos as well uh, representatives of the minorities and communities uh, partners uh, among employers are also uh, important because these are key players when it comes to um foreigners as well and uh, economical uh, migrant is a very negative uh, way of expression but of course we we need these uh, workers from abroad our corporations our production plants need these people because i do not know any company which uh, wouldn't be seeking new um, employees now so let's not call them economical uh, migrants let's call them um a workforce from abroad for instance and these people and these employers uh, can be very helpful and essential for us they can be our partners the big uh, uh, corporations have their own integration uh, plans and integration programs so this is also a good idea or uh, but uh, uh, so to come back to the church also the represented church representatives at the regional level can have uh, uh, can have a significant contribution to the discussion and i think we can rely and count uh, count with them i hope i answered your question but in our strategy you will find more uh, on this and uh, if you 
if you if you have uh, more uh, queries or questions, you can uh, contact us. We are happy to uh, answer you and provide more information. Uh, thank you, Diana. I also appreciate the idea of uh, of talking about other people and organization in cooperation because the municipality cannot do this cannot do this on its own. Another question: How is the cooperation with uh, municipalities outside of the project when it comes for to uh, organizing uh, festivals, for instance? Well, we are an organization organizing fusion festival. The 16 uh, we've been organizing this festival for 16 years. We try to be under the auspices of uh, Bratislava uh, city. In other cities, we have only a short. Uh, we were active only for a shorter period of time, considering the smaller the uh, festivals. Mm. I'm not saying this is a, a intensive cooperation, but the city is interested in the program and in, in how in uh, how our uh, festival um, looks like. I really appreciate it from Bratis, with the municipality of uh, Bratislava on your grants uh, uh, as well from the Bratislava Foundation, and we are involved in the discussion. Uh, in, in uh, discussion with Bratislava city and uh, organizations, uh, and we are invited to uh, to express our opinion um, as to how cultural planning in the uh, upcoming years uh, should look like. And I can say that in the last years we've received uh, uh, grants. Uh, uh, as in, in a participative um, procedure where we apply for uh, the uh, subsidies or the grants that this is financed from uh, cities and under the auspices uh, of the mayor of uh, Bratislava, who also comes to the festival to take a look. Well, this also suggests that the municipalities are interested in, in this topic. Uh, my question for, the, for, all of, for all three of you, we were talking about how make how to make our uh, foreigners visible, but municipalities do not uh, discuss only this topic because there are also some conflicts or some petitions signed by the citizens or maybe uh, some uh, big corporation uh, uh, is going to have new building uh, here and the city knows they will have to uh, they will have to hire or, or, or there will be more people from abroad. This is question also uh, for Jan, but um, for you too, too, because it's uh, not, uh, not not it's not only uh, positive because they have the municipalities also face difficult situations and had to know how to react. Well, we've uh, simulated such an uh, activity. Now, as what, as what to do in the crisis situations, we were talking about participation yesterday, and the participation is not only about particular groups; it's also about it's about involving all the citizens of uh, the city. So, you, the municipality should always respond. Well, it depends also on the level uh, re, uh, in relation to the openness. Uh, we have to uh, they have to be heard they have, the municipalities need to know how to communicate this Bratislava was a good example of communicating uh, things uh, beforehand and also during the process so talk to the citizens and invite them to uh, to talk uh, and, and organize a round table where we can talk uh, about and, and, and express the emotions and also respond to the emotions with the uh, discussion how to solve the issues if you ask how we should uh, respond to such a uh, complicated uh, topic well participation is the key we have to talk to the people and proactively as well we have to enter the communication as soon as or start the communication as soon as possible diana what's your opinion well there are uh, two levels the first one is the communication level and the second is the factual uh, organizational uh, level in these uh, cases. Uh, I will mention again uh, the medial coverage or our research of medial 
media uh, coverage, which uh, showed that the municipalities didn't inform, they only re responded to some issues which uh, occurred. And I would like to support the thought or the idea uh, uh, of uh, Nina. This is also related to the topics we are talking about, this proactive, positive communication. It is also a preparation for crisis situation, for, for crisis communication. The, our guide uh, also covers uh, crisis communication, what uh, the municipality, how the municipalities should prepare, because these topics and the real uh, issues which occurred are uh, is the accommodation for uh, foreign workers. They were very loud and the city had to respond just an, as an example. So the municipalities need uh, need to have some argument, they need to, to have good communication and communica communicate in time to the, um, uh, to the citizens what are our uh, um, goals and how we want to avoid such uh, issues. This is still the communication level. Then we have also the organiza organizational or uh, actual level, uh, whether the city is going to uh, take some action or not to not uh, create somewhere, uh, some big uh, or not form some big communities on the outskirts or, so, or, or somewhere uh, in, in, the, in downtown, let's say, and in, in the neighbors we have to know how to communicate uh, this topic and again the participation the people need to be involved in the public uh, affairs municipal public affairs because they have to be they cannot be viewed as a different community living or, or here which is against us but they have to live together with us and this is this is what has to be and should be uh, communicated but the communication needs to be based on real uh, facts and conditions which the city has because otherwise it wouldn't uh, lead to uh, to good to a good change jan uh, what's your opinion have you also, did you have such uh, experience in prague as well um, i would like to uh, to re and to react on on more levels because prague is a little specific because it's 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 a complex uh, environment where we do not have uh, so many problems in the uh, industrial zones that, that some production plant is uh, uh, established and the number of uh, foreign workers is increasing, uh, etc. So then some issues uh, uh, as to the coexistence can can occur. But we had some transformation of uh, of a marketplace with uh, Vietnamese uh, uh, sellers. Of course, this issue this caused some. Uh, issues uh, and some also some misinformation, uh, negative attitudes uh, from the uh, Vietnamese community. And then on the other hand, there was the general uh, interest, uh, gen interest of the general uh, public and the territorial development uh, or when production plan is being uh, established, we shouldn't uh, find a solution afterwards well when the problems uh, already occurred but we should act beforehand we should organize a meeting with the uh, citizens to tell them what is going to happen and be be prepared for the communication with uh, the foreigners with the coming foreigners as well because we can avoid some issues as well which could be related to uh, the lack of information uh, they would have about the place where they are going to live on the other hand, problem the problem also is that the municipalities have a problem with uh, the awareness from the the corporations or from the companies uh, active in on their territory because the awareness because the communication does not uh, take place because we have to and therefore we have to also set up communication channels in Czech Republic as well and now the second um, level the general communication when urban development uh, we have some meetings with the uh, public in Pro this is uh, the common place in Prague as well and we this have to be focused on the foreigners as well because this is this is a group of people uh, and the presentations from tomorrow were also great and inspirational that these 
foreigners have to be cons they have to know that the city cares about them and the city communicates uh with them and tries to solve their uh, yeah, okay. problems and again the to connect the majority and the foreigners have they have to be connected in a uh, in a in a proper or appropriate uh forum and we have to employ participative methods and the municipality in cooperation with the com commercial uh stakeholders or organizations uh, should develop the communication so that is my opinion thank you uh, so the time is up uh, at conclusion, I would like to say that in 2017, the world mayor was the world's mayor was from German town Mechelen, who uh, really uh, was really successful in in, in uh, managing the uh, migration crisis, and the city with 118 um, nationalities was really successful in his efforts. So. One, one question to panelists, what would you say to, uh, uh, what's your message for the mayors of in, in Slovakia uh, to become the world's, uh, the mayor of the world and uh, in, in relation to the uh, integration and foreigners? So if, I, if I may start, I think the, the main uh, thing is not to be afraid because our experience showed that even the mayors of some uh, boroughs or Prague uh, district, they took pictures uh, with um, some or at some integration projects. They showed their uh, their interest. What also the mayor of Bratislava did, and our uh, and one of the Prague districts is very active and uh, is very active in favor of the the perception of. Uh, one one uh, whole, not only uh, uh, majority and foreigners. I think we are happy, very happy. We can work with the community together, and we do not do not have to have so much concern because it also depends how the uh, poli how the politicians um, uh, uh, react and how they express their uh, uh, opinions. This uh, town of Mechelen is a really great example, which. Uh, developed from a problematic uh, town to uh, an inspiration which is uh, now um, shared throughout or shared globally and this migration crisis is sometimes uh, uh, not so such a bigger issue uh, when as we as we as we think so i think we shouldn't be afraid we we should uh, uh, send positive signals i think the the positive communication is really crucial because the lack of communication from from the decision decision makers and uh, is, is is crucial and we should be we should have positive attitude we shouldn't be afraid and we should know that you, what you give you give you get back uh, okay great thank you i think this message will uh, will get to our municipalities I will follow up on uh, Jan's uh, ideas when he was talking about not being afraid. So I think mm, we should uh, know how to connect uh, people and uh, listen to them. We should know that uh, being afraid is, uh, is is natural, and but we also have to listen to them actively and know how to respond. We also need to know how to um, how to communicate because mayor is only one one person or elected person, but he's one of us or he or she is one of us. So uh, because this is every it's not uh, happening behind closed uh, doors. Mayor's office is also uh, the entire office needs to know what citizens live in the in the municipality, and we need to listen and also listen to the worries and concerns that people have but also listen to the needs and we need to know how to uh how to connect them with the work of the mayor's office and this was also demonstrated in uh, mechelen a town that they were able to listen to all the people so uh, we have connect uh, connecting uh, people and not um and not to listen uh, and, and uh, uh not to be afraid 
If, uh, I think uh, the person needs to be really convinced is that yes, we want to do this. This is the right thing uh, to do. And uh, when we are uh, convinced, then the transparency is crucial because not it's not every, it can be uh, there can be problems sometimes, and this needs to be addressed as well because uh, the people need to believe our communication uh, authenticity is uh, another um, element because. Uh, nowadays, uh, how uh, these politic, this prom promises, political promises or corporate promises are not uh, popular anymore because the winners are those who are transparent and open in their communication. And two more things: uh, the coordination and the, the coordination and communication and. Uh, this is the role of the mayor as well, and I think I think this is the combination of winners. And one more thing: uh, the city is not about only only a mayor; it's about the perfect team behind uh, the mayor and about their uh, engagement. So this is basically the coordination of the people. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Janoszek. We will uh, be back. Uh, in a while, so now we will have a, a break uh, until 11.30 or 40. So you have, you have, you have basically uh, 14 minutes, we'll be back at 11.30 and we'll be having a panel about uh, communication, but more on communication uh, with the foreigners, with information they need in order to participate in the public uh, effects and how to do this. So thank you very much.